If you're from Hungary, you've probably heard the story of Karoli Takas. If you aren't from Hungary, you probably haven't heard the story, but you probably should. His story is remarkable not only for what he had to overcome, but how he managed to overcome it. Learn more about this remarkable Olympic medalist on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by Scotty Vest. Have you ever had issues carrying all of your electronics, or do you wish your clothes had more pockets? Scotty Vest has your solution. Scotty Vest has a complete line of jackets, vests, pants, and shirts, which have extra pockets to carry the things you need. Getting through airport security is a breeze with a Scotty Vest jacket. I know this because I've been traveling around the world for the last decade wearing Scotty Vest clothing almost every single day. To check out the complete line of Scotty Vest products, go to everything-everywhere.com slash Scotty Vest or click on the link in the show notes. Karoli Takas was born in 1910 in Budapest, Hungary. Like many men of his age, he joined the army at a young age and then quickly went up the ranks. Unlike other men who joined the Hungarian military, Karoli showed himself to be an extremely adept marksman, in particular in pistol shooting. By 1936, Karoli was one of the best rapid-fire pistol shooters in the world. I'll deviate a bit here to explain how rapid-fire pistol shooting works. In the event, you have to hold a pistol with a single hand, with no support from your other hand. When a light goes on, you have a limited amount of time to fire five shots at five different targets. The time limits are eight, six, and four seconds, and shooters will alternate between those times. There are 60 shots total in a competition. In 1936, Karoli was very much in contention for winning a medal at the Berlin Olympics. However, the rules of the Hungarian Olympic Committee prohibited anyone but commissioned military officers from taking part in shooting events. Karoli was only a sergeant, so they denied perhaps their best shooter a place on the Olympic team. After the Olympics, they changed the rules so that Karoli could compete in the 1940 Olympics in Tokyo. However, tragedy struck in 1938. During a military training exercise, a defective grenade blew up Karoli's right hand, his shooting hand. It was so mangled that he was unable to hold a pistol anymore. In the spring of 1939, months after his accident, Karoli appeared at the Hungarian National Shooting Championships. The rest of the competitors were glad to see him. Everyone had heard about his injury, and no one had heard or seen from him since. They were happy to see him again and were pleased that he had come out to support the team. The only problem was that Karoli hadn't come out to support the team. He told them, I'm not here to watch, I'm here to compete. After the accident, Karoli set out to relearn how to shoot with his left hand. He had spent months in private practicing how to shoot with his other hand and didn't tell anyone what he was doing. In an interview, he was quoted as saying, Why should I worry about the right hand I do not have? Let me see what I can do with the left hand I do have. He won the Hungarian National Championship using his left hand in competition for the first time ever. He became a member of the team which went on to win the 1939 World Championships in rapid-fire pistol shooting. Of course, something else happened in 1939. A little thing called World War II started in Europe and resulted in the 1940 Olympics being canceled. And the 1944 Olympics, which were canceled as well. By the time the 1948 Olympics finally occurred, Karoli had missed three consecutive Olympics due to rules and war, plus had most of his shooting hand blown off in a grenade accident. He was 38 years old and one of the oldest competitors in the 1948 Olympics. When he arrived in London, the reigning world champion, Carlos Enrique Diaz Salín Valente from Argentina, asked him why he had come. Karoli replied that he had come to learn. Karoli ended up winning the gold medal and topping the world record by 10 points. While up in the medal stand, the silver medalist Valente whispered to him, I think you've learned enough. Karoli wasn't done. At the 1952 Olympics in Helsinki, he competed again, and again won the gold medal, becoming the first person ever to win two gold medals in the event. At the age of 46, he returned for the 1956 Melbourne Olympics, this time only taking eighth place. After Melbourne, Karoli retired from competitive shooting and became a coach. He passed away in 1976 at the age of 65. The International Olympic Committee came out with a list of their greatest Olympic heroes and listed Karoli Takas as one of the greatest Olympians of all time. 
Executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is James Makala. Special thanks to everyone who supports the show over on Patreon. Please remember to leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Even a simple review can really help the show get discovered in the sea of other podcasts that are out there.